is Lord. We can bless the Lord together and give thanks and praise to the Lord God Almighty. Tonight, my Bible reading, I'll be taking it from the book of Joshua in the Old Testament, Joshua chapter 14. And I'll just read two verses of Scripture for tonight. Joshua 14, verses 11 and 12. Joshua 14, 11 and 12. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And my, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the, Am the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive, drive them out, as the Lord said. I want to use that um, verse 12 as our text, the first part, where Caleb went to Joshua and he said, Now therefore... Give me this mountain. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach on a message entitled, Asking for Something Big. <laughs> Asking for Something Big. And, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Let's just pray first. Because <laughs> I don't want, to, I don't want it to be taken out of his context or the idea in which I'm preaching it. But... Let's keep it in the context for, for what I'm talking about tonight. Let's look to God in prayer. We're preaching about asking for something big. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful for this time to be in your house, to be in your presence, presence most of all. I thank you, Lord God, for your amazing grace, your power. Thank you for opening our mind to understand. And thank you for the spirit of grace that is with us. I pray, God, as the word of God is preached tonight, that you will minister to each and every one of us the things that we have need of, that you will bless, you will accomplish your will. We love you and give all praise and glory and honor to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm preaching about asking for something big. And what I mean by this is, what I mean by this is, uh, is I'm not saying that, that, you know, to go out and pray some crazy prayer request. And you can do that if you have the faith enough to back it up and, and you are, you know, adventurous enough <laughs> to claim something great. But that's not what I'm talking about in the sense of asking for something big, as in you're going and pray for some miraculous thing. Maybe you want a, a million dollars and you want it tomorrow. And that's not a bad thing, right? It's not a bad thing. <laughs> but... You know, I'm not saying that's, that's what I'm talking about. God, I want a million dollars, and I want it tomorrow. I want it to be in my bank. God might say, well, you need to go out and get a job first. And I learn how to take care of the small things before I can give you big things. So that's what I'm talking about. What I mean by asking for something big is there are times when we all face different things. And to us, it's a big deal. To someone else, it may not be big, but to, some, but to you, it may be a challenge. Sometimes it can be a physical ailment, something you've been dealing with for a long time and and somebody else beside you might not be dealing with that so to them it's no big deal because they're not facing that problem but you are and to you that's big to another one it may be that they need to make a decision they need some wisdom they need some understanding that that goes beyond what they're capable of to to make a decision and so and and so the it may be something big to, to that person. Maybe you can walk up and say, well, man, all you need to do is this, that, and the other, and everything will be all right. But to that individual, it might not be the case. There might be something that is keeping them from seeing it that way, and so it might be a big deal to them. And so that's what I'm talking about, the idea. We all face different things at the moment in our life, and it, it, it's a big thing to us. It's a big thing to us because if we can deal with it or we can handle it as the way we should, or, we can, or it's, it's weighing heavy in our mind or, in a sense, causing us to lose, as we were talking about last night, losing joy or losing that peace, then that's a big deal. 
That's a big deal to us. And so that's what I'm talking about, asking for something big. In our Bible reading, this was something big that Caleb was asking for. He came to Joshua and he said, give me this mountain. Now to him, that was a, a, a very reasonable thing. It was something practical to him because God, he had already went into the, pro, into the promised land 40 years ago. And he spied out the land and he saw and he brought back a good report. And he said, you know what? I want this for me. Maybe he eyed this mountain and said, you know what? This is going to be my inheritance when we go in and possess the land. He had it in the back of his mind. And so he was thinking about it. And, 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 and you have to understand the situation. It was practical for him to say, give me this mountain. Because he wasn't going in there all by himself. He was a warrior. He had other Israelite soldiers with him. He had the tribe of Judah behind him. And so he, when he was going in there, this mountain was a big deal. There were giants there, but he was able to take it with the help of God. That if he go in there, this is what he wants. And uh, it was suitable for his time. Now, we're not going out there on conquering land and all that stuff. So we can't say, God, give me this mountain. <laughs> what are we going to do with a mountain? <laughs> right? Man, we can't even mow our backyard sometimes. Why, why, why are we going to do with a mountain? Right? And so, so it's not practical that we pray and say, Lord, give me a, this mountain. But what's practical is what are you dealing with at the moment? What big thing are you facing at this very moment? What thing it is that, are, that is a giant to you, that is an obstacle to you? What is that thing that you're facing? That's what I'm praying about, asking for something big. Amen. You see, throughout the Bible, God many times challenged His people to ask for things that they want and they need. Jesus, after, towards the end of the Sermon on the Mount, as He was teaching the people all these wonderful things, He got down to there in Matthew chapter 7, and He told Him, He said, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And so he said, everyone that ask, receive it. Everyone that seek, find it. And to him that knock, it shall be open. And so he told us, uh, ask, right? He didn't say, the, 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 you know, what we should ask for. He said, ask and you should receive. Like I said, every one of us, a big thing that we're dealing with may be different from somebody else. And so it's a, it's a personal thing. And so I'm bringing it on a practical level. No, we don't need a mountain, but we may need some help tonight with something that is big enough to get God involved in it. Amen. He tells us also in James, in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 2, he, he was talking to the disciples. He said, or, or writing all together, he said, Ye lust and have not. And the word lust means you desire or you want, but you don't have it. He said, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and you war, yet you have not because you ask not. And so God is showing us the importance of asking. And he's not putting a limit upon what we must ask for. A matter of fact, he's saying, you just ask. And if you have the faith, God will help you to get it. Amen. God will help you to get it. And so I'm not talking, like I said, I'm not preaching this out of the context of, you know, asking for something so big that it's so ridiculous. Now, like I said, I'm not knocking it. If you want to do that and, and waste your time in doing that or whatever, go for it. But I'm talking about in the sense of, you know what, God, I have a big need in my life. I have a big need in my life, and I'm not afraid to bring it to the God who can help me. I have this massive thing I'm dealing with, and I need God's help. I want God to step in. I want God to move. I want God to get involved in the situation. It seems like an impossibility, but I'm going to pray and ask God and have faith in the Lord that God can step in and do something for it. And so that's where we find Caleb here. For 40 years, he waited for this opportunity to stand before the leader of Israel, whether it was going to be Moses or Joshua. He probably we didn't know at the time but right at this moment it was Joshua and so he stood before Joshua and he said you know what he said I am I, he said as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me as my strength was then even so it is, is my strength now 
for war both to go out and to come in. He said, now give me this mountain. I want this mountain. I've seen this mountain. This is something that I desire. This is something I have. I have the manpower with me. I have my sons. I have all these, uh, these uh, men from Judah. We will go in and take this mountain. I'm not going in by myself. I have an army with me to back me up. And so give me something that we can take. And if I'm, God is on our side, yes, I know there are giants there. I know there are men of great stature and, and men that, 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 that of war that can do great damage. But if God is on my side and if God is going with me, me and the people with me, we will go in and take this mountain. It was a practical thing for him to ask for this mountain. And he did. He went in there and he took that mountain. And that mountain became Hebron. That area became was named after Caleb and, 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 and was given to him for an inheritance. But he asked for it. And so tonight the message is, ask. You need something tonight? God said, ask. God is not trying to keep it back from us. He's saying, ask for it. Ask for it. Believe the Lord. And if it's, a, if it's a big thing for you, ask for it and see what the Lord will do and believe Him as you're asking. You see, this is the way God operates. We ask Him and by faith, we trust Him to grant us the desires of our heart. Many times we ask for small things. People don't have a problem asking for small things because they'll say, well, you know, it's something small. You know, God's going to give it to me and He will. He will. But what about something big? <laughs> Can we not ask for something big also? Can we not push the envelope a little bit? Can we not just expand our faith a little bit, challenge our own faith sometimes? Can we not just say, okay, God, I've been asking for all these small things, but tonight I want to challenge my own faith by asking God for something big? But, but something that is uh, not, not, out of the, not out of greed or out of uh, a sense of selfish, uh, selfish desires, but I'm asking something. This is something I want that, that needs to be done. I'm praying for it, asking for something big. Caleb challenged his own faith in God. He challenged his own faith in God by asking for a mountain, a mountain filled with giants. Not just the mountain to go in and take it, but there were giants there also. And he knew he had to go in there and destroy all those giants and take that mountain if he wanted. And so he asked for it. It was a different kind of attitude in asking. He demonstrated to us a different attitude. He went, he went big, <laughs> right? He went big. He didn't say, well, give me this flat land. It's already looked nice and good. And I can um, farm it and, and it'll be easy. We can plow it and sow seed and all that stuff. No, he said, I'm going to expand my faith a little bit, if you will. I'm going to push the envelope. You know what it means to push the envelope? It means to, to attempt to extend the current limits of performance or what is impossible. And so we get that, that saying, pushing the envelope, and it means to, to push the limits, right? To push the limits. And so Caleb did that. He said, give me this mountain. He wanted, he wanted to push his faith. God, give me something big. Give me something big. Uh, nobody else came and asked for this mountain, God. Give it to me. I want it. It's big. It's challenging. But with your help, I can do it. And so tonight, uh, I'm preaching about asking for something big. Is there something big in your life that you have need of tonight? Uh, whatever the situation may be in your personal life, each and every one of us have different things that we can ask God for tonight. Can we not say, Lord, this is big, but I want it. This is big, Jesus. But I want it. Give me this mountain. This is my mountain. Maybe you need a healing. That's your mountain. Maybe you need some courage and some strength. That's your mountain. Whatever it is tonight, give me this mountain. We sometimes limit ourselves, and I'm guilty of that myself. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to me here tonight. But sometimes we limit ourselves on what we can receive from God because we don't want to push the envelope and envelope of our faith and ask for something big. We limit God also. We limit God to only small things. When God over and over in the Bible tells us, he, or He asks us a question, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? You see, tonight's message is about challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Ask God for something big. Amen? Ask Him for something big. Caleb challenged himself by asking for something big. He said, give me this mountain. And so there's three things we can look at this for tonight. Is this here. Number one, you challenge yourself. 
You challenge yourself by number one, asking. You dare to step up to God and ask him, right? You dare to step out of your comfort zone and say, God, I'm going to approach your throne with this prayer request. And so the first thing is challenge yourself. That's the first thing Caleb did. He walked up to Joshua. He challenged himself. You know what? Joshua is a new leader. I am going to go up to this man of God, and I'm going to ask him for something big. Right? And so the first thing is we have to challenge ourselves. Are we willing to step up to God in a sense, in humility, of course, but in faith as the Lord, willing to challenge ourselves to pray for something bigger than we usually pray for? And like I said, I'm not asking you to go crazy here tonight and, and all this stuff, but I'm talking within reason. Something that is a need in your life. I'm not preaching about name it and claim it kind of thing. You go lay your hand in a car in, in the, in the, in the, in the car dealer for a nice Mercedes and, name, and, st and claim it in the name of Jesus when you can't even pay the insurance, right? Or you can't afford the, the 91 octane gas to drive it or whatever, you know? I'm not talking about that craziness, but I'm talking about a sincerity in your desire. Challenge yourself, God, this is something big, but I'm going to challenge myself to pray about it. Amen? I'm going to challenge myself to pray about it. That's the first step in the right direction. Can you challenge yourself to pray about it? Can you challenge yourself to make it a desperate prayer? A prayer where you get on your knees and you bring it before God and you lay it before the Lord and you already know it's going to be big, but you're challenging yourself, I will make this a matter of prayer. I will make this a matter where I can bring it to God Almighty and say, yes, I know it's big, but I'm going to challenge myself to pray about it. And then the second thing is challenge your faith to believe God for it. Caleb not only challenged himself to approach Joshua to ask for this mountain, but he challenged his faith. He said, God will give it to me. I know there are giants there, but if God go with me, we can take this mountain. And so not only did he challenge himself to take the first step in prayer, but he challenged his faith also. Yes, I'm going to pray for it, but now I'm going to believe God to give it to me. I'm going to believe God to give it to me. And so he made this big statement. He said, now, therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out. Right? For be able to drive them out as the Lord said. So not only did he challenge himself to pray, he challenged his faith. To believe. You know, it's easy to pray, but we got to believe too. Amen. We got to believe too. And then the third thing is uh, he challenged his desire. He said, give me something big. Yes, I'm asking for this, but make it big, Lord. Maybe maybe he was the first one that, what was it, biggie size? <laughs> he didn't want a hamburger. He want a big, big, big hamburger, you know. Maybe he, maybe he was uh, one of them guys that didn't want, I don't want that 16-ounce steak. Give me a 32-ounce a, a steak. And one time this guy, is, he ordered this big old 32-ounce steak and he couldn't even finish it. I mean, it's, it's, he didn't have the ability to finish off that big steak. Maybe that's the kind of personality Caleb was. You see, the Bible said that we have faith as a grain of mustard seed. You shall say unto this mountain, be removed. And be cast into the river, and it shall obey you. And so tonight I'm talking about uh, asking for something big. Challenge yourself, challenge your faith, and then challenge your desire. Now I want to wrap it up tonight with a few verses of Scripture. We'll take ver Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter 2, verse 8. And this is speaking about Jesus himself there. He said, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Ask of me and I will give you. The father may be speaking to the son. He said, ask me something. And don't make it small, make it big. He said, I'll give you all the heathen. Amen. <laughs> I'll give you all the heathen for an inheritance and the uttermost part for thy possession. God the father said to the son, just ask me what you want. Make it big. And no doubt, Jesus said, give it to me, father. 
give it to me. And now today people are being saved all around the world from coast to coast, from sea to sea, from uh, one continent to the next. People all around the world are being saved. They're giving their life to Jesus. They're receiving mercy and grace. They're getting forgiveness of sins. Their lives are being changed because Jesus asked the Father, give me an inheritance of the earth. And people are, are coming to God. Amen. People are getting saved. They're becoming Christians, they're joining the family of God. And so he said, Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, he said, And, what, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. The Bible tells us whatsoever we ask, we receive it of him. I'm talking about asking for something big. Challenge yourself to ask, challenge your faith to believe, and challenge your desire to go after that or to desire that which you want of the Lord. He said, whatsoever we ask, we receive it of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. You see, when we live right, when we do right, when we obey the commandments of God and we're living a life that is pleasing to the Lord, then we can approach the throne of God. As he said, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may receive the help that you need. And so I'm preaching about ask for it. God, I want this thing. This is big, but I want it, Jesus. Amen. It's a massive thing in my life, but I want it. It is for me. God, give me. This is my mountain. It's a practical thing. I'm not talking about something that is not relevant or impractical, but I'm talking about something that is practical to you. That is that you understand. Caleb understood this mountain can be mine. I have the ability with the help of my brethren to go in and take this mountain. And so it was a practical thing. He said, give it to me. We can take it. Amen. And so tonight I'm preaching about in your personal life and your faith in God and your ability to believe the Lord, challenging yourself to pray for it, challenging yourself to believe God for it, and challenging yourself to accept it and to desire it from the Lord. Give me this mountain. Amen? And she come to this man, wrap it up in just a little bit. One more passage, two more verses of scripture here. In 1 John in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, he said, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So here's what the Bible tells in, telling us. He said, And this is the confidence that we have in Jesus Christ, God told me to ask and he gave me this assurance. He gave me this confidence that if I ask, whatever I ask, that if, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Amen. God hear. He's hearing our prayers. Amen. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not preaching about crazy things here now. I'm preaching about practical things. Practical needs. Big can be big, but it's practical. Amen. The mountain was big. There were giants there, but it was practical. Because Caleb, with the help of his brethren, were able to go in and take it. Amen. He had the army behind him to go and take that mountain. And God went with him and they took it. And so I'm talking about practical things tonight. What is it that you may be facing tonight? Something physical, something mental, something spiritual? Something financial, whatever it is, whatever your mountain is. I love the story also before we close about Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was getting ready to be taken up into heaven, and the prophets of God was there with him, with or the or his his replacement was there with him, Elisha. And the man of God said, "Ask what you will, and I will give it, and I, and it will be granted unto you." And he looked at the man of God. And he said, give me a double portion of thy spirit. <laughs> give me a double portion of thy spirit. I'm talking about asking something big. That's something big. And Elijah said, man, <laughs> he said, you ask a hard thing. You ask a hard thing. And he said, but I'll tell you what. If you see me when the, when the chariots came and come down and take me out of here, if you see me, you will get it. 
And you know what? It was a hard thing. It was a big thing. But God heard what he desired. And the Bible said when the chariot came down and took the prophet Elijah up to heaven, Elisha saw him. And God gave him that double portion. Amen. God gave him that double portion. Tonight, what is it that you need from the Lord? I'm preaching by asking for something big. Challenge yourself to ask. Challenge your faith to believe. Ask it. Give me this mountain. And with that, we'll close this, the message for tonight. She's going to play and sing. I challenge you tonight. Something practical. It was practical. It was reasonable. It was doable. For Caleb to ask for that mountain. To go in and take it. Tonight. What is it that you have need of? What big thing are you facing tonight? What big thing are you dealing with tonight? Ask of the Lord and let him bless it. Let him bless you and let him give it to you tonight. In Jesus' name. Father, I preach your word. Now I pray that you inspire faith in the heart of your people. I give you glory and honor and praise tonight. And ask in Jesus' name. road of travels I've seen so many times He's carried me through And if there's one thing that I've learned in my life That's my Redeemer He's faithful and true Praise the Lord. And God's presence is here with us. It's a blessing.
and we give him all the praise and glory and honor and we look forward for what he will do throughout this week, throughout this weekend. And for all you Johnston line, we wish you a wonderful week continuously and pray that you will join us again on Sunday morning, 9.30 to worship the Lord together, to magnify God. God bless you all. We'll close the service in prayer. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your presence. We love and appreciate you. We give all the glory to you, God. Have your way tonight. Continue, Lord God, to bless and help your people, to have faith and confidence in your ability. We give thanks to you tonight and all the praise. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen.